The Nord Stream pipeline explosions and Chinese expansion have reminded the world that war could dive deep. American Covered, I'm Chris Chappell. The deep sea is a very mysterious place. We can accurately map less than 20% of the seabed. That's because more than three quarters of the seabed is located at depths of more than 3,000 meters, where the pressure is more than 300 times greater than atmospheric pressure. Talk about being under pressure. Pressure like that makes the ocean floor difficult to explore because, you know, it has a tendency to crush things like vehicles or people. Unless, of course, you're part of the crew of Sequest DSV, a 1990s show about how humanity has explored and colonized the oceans, and also as a talking dolphin in the far future year of 2018. Wow. We do live in the worst timeline. We don't get hoverboards or talking dolphins. But back to the highly pressurized seabed, which might now be another zone of conflict and not just over what color people think a fictional mermaid should be. Back in September, the Nord Stream 1 and 2 natural gas pipelines connecting Russia to Germany ruptured. According to Denmark, powerful explosions on the Baltic Sea floor caused the pipeline leaks, which quickly had Europe crying sabotage. Obviously, this could only be the work of one man. Ocean Master, the evil half-brother of Aquaman. Quick, someone call Jason Momoa. But some in the West blame Russia for sabotaging the Nord Stream pipelines. Russia was responsible for something similar on a gas pipeline in Turkmenistan in 2009. And European security officials observed Russian Navy ships in the vicinity. Hmm. Even if it was Russia, I still say we should get Jason Momoa involved. He can do anything. But as of this recording, there's no concrete evidence proving that Russia did it. Russia, of course, denies that it was responsible. It's blaming the UK, which also denies involvement. And the US, which also denies involvement. Not that any country would be like, yes, you got us, we admit it. But this is not an episode about who blew up the Nord Stream pipelines. It's about how this kind of thing is gonna keep happening. And that has a lot of people worried. The suspected sabotage of the Nord Stream gas pipelines in the Baltic Sea has left Western states scrambling to better protect energy and telecommunications infrastructure on the seabed especially at depths of 10,000 to 20,000 feet. The West needs underwater security? Does this mean we'll actually see Dr. Evil's sharks with frickin' laser beams on their heads in real life? No, it won't be that easy or that cool. There are a lot of challenges for deep sea security. For one, there's the extreme water pressure and the difficulty of transferring data to and from vehicles that deep. There's also a lot of ground to protect. More than 800,000 miles of fiber optic cables are laid out underwater, carrying 95% of all international internet traffic. You know how hard it is for the US to protect their southern border? Imagine if it was 400 times longer and under the ocean, and you can't get ice agents to guard it since ice floats in water. In addition to all of the cables, there's also hundreds of thousands of pipes for carrying fuel, like the Nord Stream pipelines. Western officials worry that such infrastructure offers a juicy target for Russia and others. Those concerns predate the war in Ukraine. For example, last year, a Norwegian undersea surveillance network had 2.5 miles of cable mysteriously cut and removed. Months later, Norway had another undersea cable severed, one that connects Norway with an Arctic satellite station. The station is of crucial importance as it is one of only two in the world which can communicate with satellites in polar orbits. In both cases, Russian fishing vessels passed repeatedly over the areas where the cables were located. Now, fishing vessels have been known to damage cables accidentally while trawling, but that kind of thing is rare, really rare. A lot rarer than what's been going on around Norway. Russia, of course, denies that it's responsible. Who did Putin put in charge of making excuses for Russia? Shaggy? But they saw our fishing vessels. It wasn't me. Saw us cutting all the cables. It wasn't me. Russia does have motive for sabotaging Norway's undersea cables. 
Some of them monitor submarine activities, and Russia has accused Norway of downloading data from military satellites. Russia also has the means. If Russia were, for some reason, interested in cutting cables, it has the tools to do it. One of them is the Russian spy ship, I mean, research vessel, Yantar. Yantar carries deep-diving manned submersibles, as well as remotely operated underwater vehicles, both capable of operating on seabed infrastructure. But it's not like Russia would ever invade a region and wreak havoc in the area. I mean, if they did something like that, I think the news would talk about it non-stop all year long. The Yantar has been spotted all over the place, from Middle Eastern waters to the coast of Ireland, where it was seen loitering near transatlantic internet cables. But detecting Russia's undersea activities isn't easy, because detecting anything under the sea isn't easy. Even when you're only waist deep and wind up accidentally stepping in a bed of gross, slimy seaweed. How come I never see it? According to a 2016 study by the Washington, D.C. Center for Strategic and International Studies, the ability of many Western nations to reliably detect, track, deter, and counter Russian undersea activities has atrophied. And that was six years ago. Seabed infrastructure is probably even more at risk now. But Russia isn't the only country Western nations have to deal with in the deep sea. They also got to worry about China. More after the break. Welcome back. The Chinese Communist Party is pretty ambitious. From the Pacific Ocean to the North and South Poles, the Chinese regime wants it all. Don't they know it's dangerous to be so greedy? It's like they never saw Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Weird, you'd think they'd be a fan of factories with unsafe working conditions, full of underpaid wage slaves that pose a risk to children. And China is also targeting the deep seabed. Even Atlantica isn't safe, no matter what color the mermaids are. China is increasingly dependent upon undersea cables to support its expanding and modernizing economy. To protect those cables, China is building an underwater Great Wall. Because if you've already got a Great Wall on land and a Great Firewall in cyberspace, why not have one under the sea? Next thing you know, China will be censoring Sebastian from singing about anything remotely controversial to the Communist Party. I'm just surprised the idea to build an undersea wall didn't come from Mermagas. But the underwater Great Wall isn't actually a wall. This project, led by the China Shipbuilding Corporation, is intended to coordinate with unmanned underwater vehicles and seabed sensors to maintain underwater cables to protect them against attack. Of course, China isn't just interested in defending itself. The Chinese Communist Party is more than willing to mess with the underwater cables of its rivals. And it's building up the means to do it. For example, China's been working to conduct operations in the deep sea with both manned as well as unmanned submersibles. Strangely, some of the technology looks eerily familiar to Western technology. I'm sure they were just both inspired by nature. According to state-run media, China's even been able to dive as deep as the bottom of the Mariana Trench, home to the deepest point in the Earth's oceans. That's over 33,000 feet deep, which even beats Mount Everest in height. Which means it's official. The Chinese Communist Party has found yet another way to sink to new lows. Anyway, many of these deep sea projects are done under the guise of scientific research, but the universities that get involved have ties to the Chinese military. Retired U.S. Navy Captain James Fennell has noted that such operations provide the PLA Navy with oceanographic data on the bottom contours, water, temperature, salinity, and other metrics of what the Chinese call the ocean battle space environment. This type of information can help the PLA Navy improve its blue sea force and undermine America's deep sea advantages. Time to step up your game, U.S. Navy. China is also diving into deep sea mining. Chinese leader Xi Jinping has repeatedly connected utilization of the ocean to China's national power. That's right, she is trying to control the oceans. Or be an ocean master, if you will. Wow, this really is a job for Jason Momoa. In 2016, she said the deep sea contains treasures that remain undiscovered and undeveloped. And in order to obtain these treasures, we have to control key technologies in getting into the deep sea, discovering the deep sea, and developing the deep sea. And he's not wrong. The seabed is potentially rich with natural resources like oil and gas, as well as rare earth metals required to make technology. This gives more than enough reason for China to lead the race to exploit deep sea minerals. 
China now holds the most contracts issued by the International Seabed Authority to legally explore the seabed. Knowing how bad China is with the environment on the surface, it's no surprise that it's on track to cause a huge environmental catastrophe in the deep sea. So besides being on the brink of war with Taiwan, China is now going to drag us into a war with Namur, the submariner. The U.S. is keeping an eye on China and Russia's undersea activities. In response to rising undersea threats, the U.S. developed an undersea warfare strategy in 2016. It's also working on extending the reach and endurance of underwater drones. Currently, only the U.S., Russian, and Chinese militaries have underwater drones capable of reaching deep seabeds, although some private companies do as well. But other countries are catching on. Yes, this is the one case where you do want to sink to your enemy's level. The UK is set to acquire two survey ships to counter undersea threats, and its alliance with Australia and the US requires a rapid expansion of autonomous undersea warfare systems to counter China. I haven't seen this much aggressive conflict in the middle of the ocean since a carnival cruise ran out of margarita mix. France is also interested in seabed warfare, and after the Nord Stream explosions, France is diving even deeper for undersea security. Even India is trying to catch up by getting drones to counter China's undersea presence. So it looks like no matter where you go or how deep you dive, you'll never escape the risk of war. Rest in peace, Flounder. So what do you think about deep sea warfare? Leave your comments below. And if you like this show, remember that we rely mainly on direct support from viewers like you. All it takes is as little as a dollar per episode over on our crowdfunding website, Patreon. Visit patreon.com slash America Uncovered for more. Click the link below. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching America Uncovered.